Hi, thanks for joining me today for the Bell video vlog. I am Eric Bjorn said with Bell Performance. Uh, today we're going to talk about a property of diesel fuel called lubricity. Uh, lubricity is basically, well, it's a property that can be applied to any liquid that you're talking about, just not specific to diesel fuel alone. Lubricity is uh, how much lubricating power a given liquid has. Now, for diesel fuel, that's important because uh, there are parts like the injectors and the fuel pumps that rely on lubrication from the diesel fuel in order for them not to wear out and blow up prematurely. Uh, you know, a, a fuel injector and a fuel pump uh, do not have access to the lubricating oil that lubricates other parts of the engine. So, if they don't get lubrication from something, they are not going to last very long especially given the amount of pressure and the amount of work that both of those do. So, traditionally, um, diesel fuel has given the lubrication necessary to keep those parts running well. Um, <clears throat> back in 2004-2005, uh, the trucking industry became aware that they were planning to take out a lot of the sulfur of the diesel fuel. And they were extremely concerned because the more sulfur you take out of diesel fuel, the less lubricity that fuel has. Now, keep in mind that diesel fuel used to be uh, 5,000 parts per million for sulfur. And then in the 90s, they took out 90% of that, lowered it down to 500 ppm, and started calling that low sulfur diesel. So suddenly they find out that 2006 or 2007, they were going to go taking the rest of it out, essentially, going from 500 to 15 parts per million. Naturally, that concerned the trucking industry a great deal and created a market for lubricity additives. Now, um, lubricity additives, by and large, tend to be added at the refinery. Now, refineries have a couple of different technologies to choose from. They have what's called monoacids and they have synthetics. Now, we're not going to go into the chemistry of exactly what distinguishes uh, one from the other. Uh, practically speaking, the monoacid chemistry has been around for a, a longer time than the synthetic has. Um, the treat rate's different. Treat rate, I think, is a little higher for the monoacids, um, but they're considerably cheaper for the refiners. Um, in recent years, uh, uh, manu uh, fuel additive manufacturers who make synthetic uh, lubricity additives uh, have brought those to the market and have really tried to make a case that th these synthetics are uh, they have fewer problems um, they, they they have a lower treat rate um, I, I may have misspoken earlier said that mono acids have a lower treat rate actually the synthetics have a lower treat rate um, you do pay more for that though and uh, whether it it equals out in the end well that really depends but it doesn't always equal out in the end it's sometimes these synthetics uh, come out actually being higher per part per million, you know. And so when a refiner is faced with a choice of which one to use, um, you know, they typically would choose to use the monoacid lubricity additive. Now, those who manufacture synthetic lubricity additives will combat that by implying that monoacids may have uh, what they call downstream fuel interactions. And what that means is that they... They uh, interact with other types of fuel additives and form nasty things inside that fuel. Um, and for a while, that did happen to scare a lot of people. But what they quickly realized, when they looked at the actual information, they found that the mono acids didn't really have that. There was only a slight chance of that happening. And when you look in the marketplace as far as whether it did actually happen, um, the mono acids came back looking pretty good. So... Uh, if you're a consumer and you're watching this, you're like, well, why do I care about this? And, you know, th this is, isn't necessarily going to change the way you live your life each day. Uh, this is just a picture to give you an idea of what kind of stuff goes on out there in the marketplace. Um, the, the, the kind of things that fuel refiners have to add to the fuel before it gets to you. And if you are a diesel truck operator or a user of diesel fuel, you can bet your bottom dollar that your diesel fuel has some lubricity additives added to it. Um, so that's all we got for today. I am Eric Bjornstead with Bell Performance. Uh, if you like this, visit our website, bellperformance.com or wefixfuel.com. Thanks very much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.